Coming up in this edition of the Voices of the Past Netcast, we'll meet Lisa Louise Cook. Lisa created and maintains Genealogy Gems, one of the world's most popular genealogy websites. She'll tell us about the learning curve involved in using online media and how she uses the web to create a deeper connection to her audience. Voices of the Past. I'm Jeff Guin. We'll have that interview in a moment, but first here are a couple of briefs about heritage in the online world. Expedia is partnering with the National Park Foundation on a new website to help travelers enjoy their trips to U.S. national parks a little bit more. The site includes downloadable park maps and other content from the National Park Foundation, as well as information about lodging options outside the parks. The content also includes suggestions for long weekend itineraries with stops to national park sites in Colorado, Texas, and Michigan, as well as a series of stories called Can't Miss National Parks. Now the timing of the website launch was designed to coincide with the airing of Ken Burns' new documentary on public television called The National Parks, America's Best Idea. Italy is putting the Baghdad Museum online. The Virtual Museum of Iraq is designed to make some of the world's most important artifacts accessible to everyone. The site offers visitors the chance to walk through eight virtual halls and admire works from the prehistoric to the Islamic period, while video clips reconstruct the history of the country's main cities. Visitors can rotate some of the objects in the Virtual Museum to get an almost 360 degree view. Now, the Baghdad Museum boasts one of the best collections of ancient artifacts in the world. Around 15,000 of the museum's relics were carried off during a 48-hour looting spree in 2003 in the wake of the U.S. invasion. While around 6,000 works have been returned, many other pieces are still missing. The Baghdad Museum project is looking for international partners to help with its four-part plan to help save the museum. The program helps to establish an online catalog to help locate the artifacts from the Baghdad Museum. But it also would like to create a collaborative workspace within the virtual Baghdad Museum to allow international teams to work together. Lisa Louise Cook has been passionate about family history since she was a child, looking at old family scrapbooks with her grandmother. Since then, she's turned that passion into a career. She's the producer and host of the popular Genealogy Gems podcast, an audio and video genealogy show available on iTunes. I spoke to Lisa Louise Cook recently, and here's what she had to say about how she learned to use social media tools to promote genealogy. I, I think it wasn't difficult only because I was so passionate about it. Um, it. It's like when it hits you, this is the right way to go, this is the right medium, I, I know what my message is, then it was like there aren't enough hours in the day. Right. And so for 30 days, I think I was doing it around the clock. Um, just eating up everything I could find in terms of how do you podcast, how do you hook the computer up, you know, where do you get a mic, and um, how do you set up a blog, and I was constantly, if I wasn't podcasting or setting things up myself, I was out running around and doing errands and listening to other people on podcasts explain how to do it, mm -hmm. and um, that's why I think within the month I was able to get it up and running, but the ideas and, the, and have been formulating for a long time. And it is kind of the classic story of you can look back at your life and say, wow, everything I've been doing up to this point was all about getting ready to do this. Mm -hmm. Because everything from my theatrical background to um, producing videos to being on a television show and learning about interviewing, um, my passion for family history, some of the teaching opportunities I'd had in small class settings, all came together and it was like this is the time this is the the, the moment where it all gels. Someone's watching this and they're inspired and they're developing their own sense of mission and they want to involve new media in it. What advice would you have for that person? How do they get started? <sighs> Education, educating yourself and and know that there are a lot of free options out there to educate yourself. I mean, there are some great books and things, but um, you know, life keeps going on and, and you wanna to try to get up to speed as quickly as you can. I tapped into a lot of podcasts. I just went in there and did keyword searches on, you know, how do you do this, how do you do that, video, podcast, you know, whatever. And I would typically find somebody 
who had some great information. Mm -hmm. So constantly um, educating yourself, thinking about what your message is. You really can't be everything to everybody. Right. In fact, I was just interviewing a blogger on my Family History podcast, and she was saying, you know, you can't be so-and-so. They're already, they're already there, you know. Um, don't try to mimic somebody else, but take what your strengths are and use that. And then, fo and then decide what the focus of your message is. And um, I think, and also one thing I've just been using lately when I wrote my courses for the university was YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, people, particularly older folks, tend to get very nervous about going on YouTube because there's a lot of, you know, stuff out there they don't want to see. I'm, I'm with them on that. Mm -hmm. um, but if you use that search box, you're going to be able to hone right in on what you're looking for and you bypass all that stuff. And so when I was looking for these different topics I was writing about, I would go out and throw a keyword in YouTube and I would find somebody had produced a video about it and I got a little snippet here and there and I was able to reference that and give that to my, my uh, students. So you can certainly, my gosh, I just took up knitting, couldn't figure out how to do a, a yarn over and I went and put knitting yarn over and there was somebody showing me how to do it on the video. Mm -hmm. So that can be applied to anything. and. Um, there's a lot of great people producing content, and every single day there's something new. Mm -hmm. So it's always worth going back and checking. I don't know. Does that answer your question? It as absolutely far as does. I and I think it's important for people to realize as well that you know the person doing that knitting video probably had a $300 camera from Walmart or something like that. It doesn't take a lot of money or absolutely. fancy equipment to produce this stuff so I guess what would be valuable if you would just share some of the equipment that you actually use in putting together your content um, it's evolved over time I, I had started out with one of those little $10 Radio Shack microphones you know the little <laughs> plastic ones very quickly realized I didn't like the sound of it and I went and bought a podcasting kit which had the microphone and that type of thing on Amazon and have upgraded from there. Um, and that brings me back to when you're trying to learn how to do some of this stuff or you, you think, I do want to do a blog or I do want to do video, um, go out and find somebody that you think is doing a terrific job and watch it Wa and look for the details. Don't worry about all the big picture stuff that they're talking about. I really believe, you know, it's in the details. That's where the, the real connection happens and the quality happens. And then Right now I have my new Macintosh, which is kind of the video audio center. I have my old PC that I finally got a new flat screen for. I have my laptop because I do go and I do presentations. Last year I invented in my own, I invested in my own projector. So now I can say, yep, I can go to a, a seminar and I can be set up to go. And my latest is my boom. I guess you call it a boom for my mic. Uh, before it was always on my desk. And, you know, I would go crashing, it would hit the floor, and I would, you know, bump it and that kind of thing. Now it's on a boom, I can just, it looks just like in the radio station. <laughs> and I think it was $100, but it seemed like an extra extravagance to me. I waited a long time to spend the money on it, and it is a godsend. <laughs> <laughs> that and the pop screen for the microphone. Mm -hmm. So, um, like you're asking me, if you hear somebody you think is doing a great job, or you like their video... You'd be amazed. People are so helpful. I email people all the time. By the way, you, you know, can you give me an idea or a clue or you know whatever? And people are always willing to share. So, I that's one of my mottos: ask, ask, ask. Don't Absolutely. be afraid to ask. All they can do is say, "No, I'm too busy." Okay. <laughs> well, that's the great thing about the web. You can ask people all over the world. You know, it, yeah. you're not limited to just your local area. So. And I, I had a podcaster in Australia contact me and say, oh, I heard your podcast. Love this, love that. You might tweak this to get the sound better. And I was like, when would I have? And he'd been doing podcasts for two years. So it was amazing. Now, Lisa speaks nationally on genealogy topics. She's also the author of the book, Genealogy Gems, Ultimate Research Strategies, as well as the Genealogy Gems news blog. You can listen to more of our interview at the Voices of the Past audio podcast, it's on our show notes site and on iTunes. And our show notes site is also the place to learn more about any of the stories that we've told you about today. You can find it by logging on to voicesofthepast.org. That's all for this edition of the Netcast. Until next time, we'll see you online.